these are Toyota Land Cruisers. I'm cruising the land and this is a long awaited video. Let me put the camera around. And here are two of my 80 series. I've been talking about doing this video for a long time comparing what is the best Land Cruiser 80. So this black one here is a 1996 JDM diesel 24 valve. So the newer, the newest diesel engine you can get in an 80 series. And this is an FZJ80 in 1995. So the latest best model, 95, 96, 97 for the US market. And they did make gas ones in Japan as well. But before I start, I have got hundreds of hours into these vehicles, knowledge, know-how. I've had these cars since inception, since 19, well, my first Land Cruiser was 1995. So do me a favor, take five seconds, hit the like button, because you're going to love this video. And if you don't like it by the end, uncheck it. So let's take a moment, scroll, you see that little thumbs up, like, hit that. All right, that'll help us in the algo, so all Land Cruiser lovers will be able to find this video. All right, where do I begin? In my mind is an encyclopedia of these trucks. So if you're in the market or if you've had one in the past and you wanna revisit the ultimate, the best full floating axle uh, body on frame design truck, this is it. This was the pinnacle of Land Cruisers. And yeah, some of you got heritage and three, maybe a 300 if you're not in the US or an LX6, uh, LX600, but this was the ultimate. And if you look into inflation dollars, dollar for dollar, what was put into these trucks, Toyota put way more in these trucks than they do in the brand new ones, believe it or not. These were over-engineered. The 90s was a great time in Japan for the economy, and they just wanted to have the ultimate SUV overland ultimate vehicle, and you're looking at it. So the question is, if you're in the market, which is the right one to get before these prices go too high? So in the US, we only got gas. That's this one. And when I'm talking about the best Land Cruiser possible, I'm, you know, I'm omitting 91, 92, because those had the 60 series engine. You don't want that. Reason being, it's a four liter, 155 horsepower, trying to push all this weight. It's, it's, a, it's a slug. And if anything, a lot of 60 series, old 60 series. Look at look at uh, Corsetti Cruisers. Look at all these guys that are redoing these trucks. You know what they're putting in them? LSs because that 4.0 is just no bueno. That 3FE. So or in the 60, the two the 2F engine. Uh, if you have the single lights, you know the the double quads up front in a 60 series. That's an FJ62. So that had the 3FE engine that graduated to the Land Cruiser. Um, avoid those ones because when you're going up hills you're gonna scream at yourself so that means you want to go 93 and up but 93 94 didn't have airbags um, you know there's a lot of changes that happened in 95 so 95 in my books the best and 96 97 yeah 97 Toyota got a little fancy with their badging with uh, you know their anniversary 40th anniversary and then their collector's edition believe me if you get a 95 96 or 97 either way they're awesome um, as far as however many they sold you know uh, anniversary or collectors it's in the thousands it's not a big deal it really isn't and it's the same truck and in my book when you're getting the uh the 40th anniversary you're getting a two-tone so you're getting like the moon glow with the desert dune colors and and i'm just not a two-tone fan you know back in the 90s late 80s 90s maybe two-tone was cool but uh eh, not for me anymore i like one color like this this is the moon glow pearl so let's talk about owning one of these the FZJ is a gas guzzler. If you do your research, people are talking about getting eight miles a gallon to you know, 12, 13 if they're super lucky and have it stock. Once you start putting weight on that, and I mean front uh, armor, winch, roof rack, rear bumper, uh, sliders. You ever pick up a slider? That thing's heavy. That's just dead weight. Um, unsprung weight, I guess you could say. So as you add more gear, this thing gets sluggish and heavy and it's, the fuel efficiency is horrible. But then, let's look at the black one here. 
Not so much with a diesel. This diesel is maybe, if you look up your research, people that you know outfit them, make them real heavy. Some are getting in the teens. I've seen 17, 18 miles a gallon. I've seen mid 20s. I experienced, what, 440 miles on a tank coming back from uh, Scottsdale, uh, going on the highway, of course. So the fuel economy is phenomenal. And that's even when these get weighted down. And I'm, my experience is the 24 valve diesel, which um, 95 through 97. If you get 94 and older, you're getting the 12 valve that had some bearing issues. Do your research, but it's tolerable. Still a great engine. The horsepower and the torque about the same. So let's talk about power. And I will take these for a spin, take you along with me so you can see the diesel. Um, you just gotta love that diesel sound, right? And when you look at horsepower, the diesel is about 168 horsepower, but it's all about torque. When you talk diesel, you, you know, horsepower is secondary, it's mostly torque. And the torque on this is two, uh, I wanna say, hang on, 265. Yeah, it's about 265 at 1800 RPM. So you're getting your torque low versus the gas, the FZJ, your torque's 275, 10 more, but that's at 3200, so you gotta rev it up. So low end on the diesel is great, and that's great for overlanding too. The horsepower on the FZJ is higher. It's a 212, you know, compared to the 168 in the diesel. But again, it's gas, you rev it up, that's where you're getting your power, when you get higher in the power band and the higher uh, RPMs. And that horsepower is at a higher RPM, of course, in the 3,600 RPMs, I think, in that range, 34. And when you drive these, you know, I would say the FCJ feels a little faster, but then you can put a supercharger, make it really fast, just like the diesel. You can change your turbo and the diesel, a bunch, bunch of aftermarket pro products coming out of Australia. But for me, it's a Land Cruiser. I'm not trying to make any land speed records. I'm trying to enjoy the ride. It's the experience. I love it. I mean, you got to go a little slower, give people a chance to soak it in when you're going down the boulevard because people will check you out. They'll remember. I mean, what we had about 80,000 of these sold in the US, Japan and Australia are the other two big markets that had a bunch, but we never got the diesel. So if MPG is on your mind, especially fuel prices these days, go diesel. And if you don't care, and it's your, just your weekend warrior, you're not gonna put a huge amount of miles on it, then go gas. Now these, um, I've got outfitted to the max. You can see rear, uh, this is the old school slee uh, on the FZJ, the HDJ. It's got the, uh, the newer slee. And let's just talk F and H, right? You keep hearing me say that, and for those of you who know, maybe skip ahead a minute, but F, is standing for gas that's gas powered so that's an fzj80 the h is diesel this is an hd81 and you'll hear like well wait a minute there's an hd80 and an hd81 81 means it's right hand drive japanese market the hd80 is for the rest of the world so outside of the uh, japanese market and would have been left hand drive and uh, diesel as well and you know, Japan, they did make gas ones. They also made these with the 1HZ engine, which is touted to be one of the best engines ever made uh, by Toyota, but its its power is, is gonna be wanting, you know, again, to me, the, the 1HZ being a great engine is gonna be a little bit like a 3FE carryover from the 62 series to the, um, the 80 series. A, a little bit of the same thing. And Toyota's known to do that. They carry over, you know, the last motor in one of their models to the next model for a year or two before they upgrade and change the engine. They always do body first, engine second. But both great. You know, aftermarket, to me, Land Cruisers, there's so much you can do with them. They all have their own style, um, just depending what you want to do with it. What type of roof rack? What type of front bumper? Like this, this is just a bolt-on joust, but I wanted to keep it kind of that Japanese look. This one's an AOE. Uh, I love this for high clearance, uh, you know, approach angle. 
on these, I'll have a separate video where I'm going to talk about suspensions because this one has the Icon Stage 3 adjustable. Such a cushion ride. And this one, a little bit different. I, I still went with the Icon Springs because I found those to be best as a dual rate spring, but with King shocks. King being probably the ultimate in plushness. I did not do the sliders on this truck just because that aluminum step is beautiful. Of course, if I hit a rock, it'll crush it like a tin can, but this truck is more of an overlander for me because it's not triple locked, and this one is triple locked. All right, what's triple locked? Real quick, it means center locker. They all, every Land Cruiser ever made has center lock. This is full-time four-wheel drive. The 80 series was the, was the first full-time four-wheel drive. So you're always in four-wheel drive. You can lock your center, then you can lock the front diff, and you can lock the rear. That's the ultimate if you're rock crawling. You know, these trucks can get through a lot just on its four by four alone. But once you get in a precarious situation, this is the magic dial. Maybe 28% of Land Cruiser 80 series got that for the US market. You can always upgrade and you'll see people have buttons here, ARB, I have another 80 that has that, if you've seen my channel. Um, so you can always add them, but you're gonna pay a little bit more if it comes with uh, the locker, the lockers front and rear. So I will have a video comparing these suspensions and a Dobinson six inch lift that I have on another FZJ80, uh, which is actually coming up for sale. These two I'm keeping, but three is maybe too many in the stable. But such a blast, awesome vehicles. You can't go wrong. To me, it's a rolling investment. So if you buy one of these, you can enjoy it for years and it will hold and appreciate value as long as you keep it in good shape. Just, you know, look for a rust free, clean uh, example. And right hand drive. I have another video comparing the two rear barriers. That's a Delta back in this one and in the um in the moonglow pearl over there uh, i've got the it's called the specky barrier which is sold by um Whitsend. yes a lot of you are asking what in lord's name is that on your hood this is blunt force products so they make for military for search and rescue these bonnets for on defenders and on land cruisers and nissan patrols and just cool trucks you have out in the uk so I found him, I bought a few, put them on, I love it. I got it for the look, but as far as practicality, people are saying, well, what do you do with that? Well, you can take your um, synthetic rope and put it on top if you're doing a water crossing, so you don't have to wade in the water and, and try to fumble to find your, um, your rope. You can put gear, if, if it's a muddy trail and you gotta do a trail fix, you can keep your gear up there. You can put your recovery boards up there. Um, you name it, so lots of functions. Oh yeah, we wanted to check the the Specky. And more, more of just a cage versus uh, the Delta. And uh, the Delta I found was easier to put a upper do-it-yourself. I put a rack up top, uh, where this one you really can't do the same function unless you really make a do-it-yourself um, solution. But both serve their purpose. If you got a dog, I mean, it's both. Both are great. Uh, the Delta, again, I'll put I'll put a link in my description for that video, um, so you can see the differences if you're in the market for putting a barrier. Okay, I can go on and on. How about we uh, take these for a spin? All right, let's jump into the FZJ first. Leather seats, that's one difference with the diesel. Diesel, you're gonna get the cloth seats. And some people prefer it because the leather does crack. These are original, I just can't um, part with them. So I'm trying to keep those. There we go. That's another video, put the Switch Pros to light up all those lights. 
doors is not closed. Probably my trunk. All right. But again, as I mentioned, suspension makes all the difference in the world. Let's just navigate our way through here. Yeah, the suspension is so smooth. The Icon with the dual rate springs is the way to go. Again, I think the ultimate dream would be manual. This, in the US, we got all automatics and my diesel's automatic. So one, the one box I wish I could have checked off is a manual, that'd be the best. But the, get, the FZJ, you know, you're not gonna smell any of that diesel. Some people just don't like a diesel smell. I don't mind it. And um, it's gonna be a little quieter. The, uh, the diesel engine you can hear, but again, some people love diesel as I'm one of them. Love a diesel engine. But the, uh, the gas powered is a little peppier because you get up into your, like a sports car, you get up into the higher RPMs and then your horsepower is up there. It feels a little faster. Not much, but enough that you can tell. The diesel to me is just the cruiser and this is more of the peppy and again uh, you know some people have uh, <laughs> we got the flashes from that Toyota uh, Tacoma one one Toyota recognizes another right so ultimately um, as I was mentioning you could put a supercharger you can make this thing super fast but to me putting a supercharger once it's got 150,000 miles you know the engine's not used to that that's like um, you know all of a sudden hitting the gym at age 50 you know you're not as strong and can't take some of that uh, power lifting as well as you could when you were in your 20s right so same sort of thing I, I wouldn't just throw and it's hard these days to find a supercharger anyways um, you know tie it a bill you can get other aftermarkets but if you want to play around with horsepower a diesel engine turbo that's a different story you can definitely do that but this one great cruiser the icon suspension with the dual rate springs I mean it's like you're riding a Cadillac uh, my wife has an LX 570 I gotta say this drives as smooth as her LX 570 with the automatic height control and comfort and all that and I have a dial the beautiful thing with the icons is you can dial it up for firmness or dial it down the Fox uh, not the Fox sorry the King shocks that I have in the uh, diesel those are um, you have you have the gas in them so you have to uh, basically put the PSI but they're they're set I think at a 160 PSI and that's plenty perfect because those are plush King's gonna be more plush and you know you can when you have the icon it's, it's almost like you're in a sports car you can take corners at speed also there's other things like people talk about wiggle I just have to punch my code in here people talk about wiggle when um, in the back of the vehicle so you can get the uh, Delta uh, pan hard lift and that eliminates your wiggle I have the Delta in both these trucks especially when you go higher if you're gonna go to a higher lift all right let's get back home and jump in the other one okay here we are at the diesel let's give this thing a whirl so again as I was mentioning the sound right Notice how this one starts right up. You don't have the rrr, 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 where I failed on the, my first try and got on the second on the gas. Diesel fires right up. The second you turn the key, it's instant. All right, get the windows up. That Defender there, I just got that because honestly, I've been falling in love with diesel lately. So I have three diesel Land Cruisers and that Defender. I'll do a comparison video of that Defender compared to 
the 73 series diesel. I don't know if that's fair, but we can do a video of that. So this one, again, the torque, the power, is on the low end. Low RPMs, and I've always found, like, let's say cruising on the highway, 80 miles an hour. I'm in California, and 80 seems to be what uh, the flow of traffic is. This rig will be at 2200 RPMs, whereas the gas will be, both, both have the same transmission with a little overdrive button, so four speed with overdrive. The uh, FCJ will be slightly higher, like maybe at 80 miles an hour, 25, 2600 RPMs. So maybe that has something to do with the fuel economy as well with the diesel. Lower RPMs, just cruising along like it's nothing. It takes hills like it's nothing. The gas powered will do some kick downs. If you're taking a big grade, like a major hill, uh, like the one going to Vegas, just exiting out of San Bernardino, yeah, the diesel will take that a little easier. I have found that when it comes to big hills. All right. And this suspension I just put in, so I've got, you know, under 100 miles experience, but it has the dual spring icons, um, which, you know, great for on-road and off-road. You get the best of both worlds and such a smooth ride. And like I said, you can take corners at speed with this suspension. It's like you're on rails. And as far as diesel, um, Land Cruiser and their diesels, that 1HZ um, engine I have in what I call Godzilla, that's on my channel, that's the HCJ73. And then I got a um, 1990 60 series, but it's called an HJ61, remember? H for diesel. So you have the HJ61, uh, and here in the US, the same year, well, 88, 89, and beginning of 90, you have the FJ62. So 61 means for the Japanese market, and uh, that was the, uh, the 12 HT diesel engine turbo. That diesel, the 12 HT, is actually just as fast as this uh, engine, which is the 1 HD hyphen FT engine. So I, I've driven both, and this might be smoother being a 24 valve, but the power is pretty close, believe it or not. Maybe my, uh, my HJ61 has been tuned, but I'll post a video one day comparing those two diesels, this one and the uh, the 60 series diesel. Again, subscribe to my channel. It's all Land Cruisers, diesels, gas. Uh, I've had a lot of them, 100 series, 200 series, LX 470, LX 570, 40 series, my green machine, off-roader, um, you name it. The only, the only one still on my bucket list is an Iron Pig. I haven't had one of those yet. So, but hopefully driving these two, taking you for a quick little spin, gives you an idea of cruising in a Land Cruiser. You know, you're not in a rush to get there, but one thing's guaranteed, you'll get back in a Land Cruiser there and back. All right, let's do a wrap up of this video. And what, as far as I'm concerned, would be the go-to Land Cruiser, the best of the best of the 80 series. All right. So in conclusion, if I was to start over, which one would I pick? Boy, that's such a tough question. You're talking like, which is your favorite kid, right? It's impossible, you can't choose. You like them for different reasons, or you love them both. So the diesel, I mean, again, MPGs, or if you like diesels, diesels is, is, is the bomb. The FZJ80, it's also fanta fantastic. And to me, I think it's all about the suspension, how you set these things up. If you get one of these that has original suspension, even if you only got 80,000 miles, time to change it. And look at my suspension video to decide what's gonna be right for you. But you can make this thing ride so plush, like a Cadillac. So the reason why I've got two is, quite honestly, I couldn't decide. <laughs> so I have both of them. And I'll ride one on the weekend and still remind myself, how amazing is this rig? And then I'll drive the other one and have the same feeling. So 
never um, when you when you have multiple vehicles you never get bored right because you can drive one for a bit and then uh, jump into the other and it's they're honestly two different experiences they really are so hard hard to pick one over the other I would just pick the one you know if I was starting over and I was shopping I'd be looking for both an FZJ and a diesel and whichever one I found first I'd buy that's pretty much what I would say you're gonna have an easier time finding an FZJ 80 but uh, I think the diesels are coming into the market and people will start discovering how phenomenal they are. Those engines are gonna last a million miles, I'm telling you. It'll be a vehicle that'll be, you know, hand-me-downs. So with that, good luck in finding your Land Cruiser. Message me. Um, if you comment below, I'll get back. Let me know what's, uh, what you're finding and if you have any questions, be happy to help. But one thing for sure, you will love it. There's nothing like a Toyota Land Cruiser 80 series. So thanks for tuning in. Again, if you haven't, hit that like button and happy trails and subscribe and check out the other.